Did you know patients with pulmonary embolisms can actually have an abnormally low end tidal CO2? Let me show you why. Okay, so basically I'm going to explain a little bit of physiology for you. So this is the blood that's moving past the alveoli in order to exchange oxygen and CO2. Okay, and so CO2 is going to come into the alveoli, oxygen is going to come into the alveoli like so. So that's kind of normally what happens as blood is flowing past the alveoli. Now what happens when we get a blockage? Well, when we get a blockage, that means that we have no flow past the alveoli here. And so what essentially occurs, air that moves into the alveoli like you see here, but no exchange of CO2 is going to occur. Whereas where you have still flow on this side, so we still have air that's coming into these good alveoli that has good flow that's going to have an exchange of CO2. And CO2 is going to make it into the alveoli on this side where there is flow. So how do we get that abnormally weird kind of CO2 is that when we start to breathe out, we end up mixing the air that was in exchange with CO2 with the air that was. And so when we breathe it out and it reaches the monitor, we do still get a concentration of CO2. It's just abnormally low because some of the air that is not getting any flow of blood doesn't have any CO2 concentration exchange with it whereas we're mixing it with some that does. And that's why we get an abnormally low CO2 in pulmonary embolisms, simply because that some of the air has not had exchange because no flow is occurring because of that blockage. All you need to do is hit the link in the bio and we're gonna send all of our daily videos straight to your email so you can get your daily dose of medicine. Hit the link in our bio and sign up right now.